Shalom, giving all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakadash, and the Balana City Apostles, Elders and Brothers, on down at Great Millstone. Salutations to the whole fleet leg. This is your brother, Rai Banyamian, here to share another lesson. Um, this one I may call the love of many, you know, is waxing cold. I may change the, um, the title at the end. But, um, you know, as um, you know, just reference, referencing to a few brothers in the um, the group chat that, you know, the crime, uh, the way, you know, crime is going, not only um, in the city of Philadelphia, but all over the country, that people, ordinary people would be afraid, you know, to come outside, you know, just to do their basic um, errands, you know what I mean, because uh, the spirits that would be on these people. You know, they wouldn't see any benefit, you know, to um, coming out in these streets because they may not, um, there'll be a high probability of them not making it back home. You know what I'm saying? And we are at the beginning of those times right now. So, you know, it's all going to share um, a few scriptures, uh, a few videos in queue that was um, shared, you know, through the brotherhood and all um close it out here all right uh first portion of script here i want to share is in uh matthew 24 and 12. it says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall last go so all the sin that is going on right now all right there's a um a result for it you know what i'm saying one plus one equals two, right? So the sin on top of sin on top of sin, the iniquity is what is causing um these spirits, these uh, wicked spirits to be upon people, you know, to do these um these evil deeds. And then at the same time we are nearing the end of our uh, cap captivity, you know, so it's prophecy that these things, you know, are gonna happen. Um at the end of uh you know, at the end of you know, the wicked's reign, he saw Edom's um, reign, you know. I also want to visit in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, Iraq. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to go to Timothy uh, first. Okay, Second Timothy 3. And I read from verse 2. It says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, you know, boastful, boasters, proud, blasphemers, uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, holy. You know, so they have confidence in themselves and their material things, you know. Verse 3, without natural affection, um, truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good. You know, I remember, um, you know, back in the islands where I grew up, when, you know, you would pass by another individual, you would say, you know, good morning, or whatever, whatever time of the day it was, you know. You would greet that person in the season of that time, good morning, you know, good evening, or good afternoon, you know what I'm saying? You know, now you you know you don't um see that people don't have the you know the affection for one another um like they do. It's likely that you will get um a sharp eye, as they say. Um. You know when um you pass by somebody, and it may not be because you know you have uh, one of the nicest cars in the world or you are well groomed. You know what I mean. Sometimes you could be driving an old car, could be twenty five years old. And you know you look like a regular person, but you know your countenance is um is different. Your spirit is different, and um you know is that to what they hate then to or you know a lot of um people they just have a natural hate or envy, um you know towards their you know their fellow man. So the hate the hate is definitely there, and um it is not difficult with that hate that people already inherently have, and then with these spirits working on their minds is not difficult for these people to carry out um the acts and stuff that they do you know so we just need need, need to walk circumspectly you know because while a lot of people are um, strapping up with their gun we need to gird up 
with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, you know, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Right? Because they will be our only um, defense and not uh, with a sword or a gun. Especially when um, uh, things get difficult. And you will see that in these last days. People that have these guns that are fighting back, you know, they will lose a lot of um, battles too. You know what I'm saying? Because they're relying on the you know the carnal uh, means rather than that of the spirit you know what i'm saying so i just want to show the few, um the few videos and with a few scriptures and close it out all right lord well then you will be um edified um, the theme of this is you know to repent um because the the most high and the spirit that righteous spirit is our only the defense when uh, everybody would be afraid to uh to step outside Welcome to the school where my child feels at home. He loves being a part of a warm, nurturing community. I get it. A 20-year-old mom was shot in the head as she pushed her newborn in a stroller. Her killing is being called another bleak episode in a wave of gun violence that has gripped New York City. The slaying happened here around 8.30 p.m. on the city's Tony Upper East Side, the site of multi-million dollar apartments, world-famous museums, and high-end stores. Cops say a hooded man dressed all in black came up behind the young mother and shot her in the head, just feet from this school playground. When a mother's pushing a baby carriage down the block and is shot in point-blank range, it shows just how this national problem is impacting families. The three-month-old girl is unhurt. Authorities say the mom, Asia Johnson, was targeted. She can be seen proudly showing off her baby bump shortly before the birth. No suspect has been named, but police reportedly want to question the baby's father. Another blow for jittery New York. <laughs> As you all see, you know, the mother, she was, um, you know, doing a day a day to day chore, you know what I'm saying? Taking uh, her child out, you know, for a stroll, for exercise or whatever. And her life ended, you know, that very same day. You know, little did she know a half thought that when she began that day that, um, you know, you know, she wouldn't see the, the, um, the end of it. And this is the, the life that we live, man. We live the life of um you know pretty much as a soldier you know when you see um those soldiers of war they don't know you know when a a bomb is gonna you know blow up near them you know when they're gonna be shot you know what i'm saying so we are just live we, we are living that day to day there's no two year five year or ten year plan in this place man we are here to serve out our punishment and the quicker we realize that you know we could move accordingly and uh, fight and seek repentance, you know what I mean, every day, you know, in the sight of the Most High, you know what I mean, that's why they say knowing is half the battle, so knowing that, man, it, it, you know what I mean, it'll get the understanding, you know what I mean, to constantly pray and try and grow, you know what I mean, in the spirit as much as possible, uh, I'm gonna hit another script here, in the book of Syrac. Uh, 39 and 28 I ain't gonna keep this too long all right so yeah the, these um spirits that are doing these things right they are performing the duty of the most high they are performing you know the judgment that the most high send them out to do without delay you know what I mean as it says here in the in the book of Ecclesiastes 39 and 28 it says these spirits there be these spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made it. So the most I send these spirits to perform the judgment. Yeah, the woman is a beautiful woman. You know, the child is young. But hey, the most is a great king that is, um, you know, to be feared and to be reverenced. Uh, he's not a god to be played with. You know, though we fall seven times, you know, seek you know repentance and try man you know offend less as the key offend less every day i right? strip something away uh strip some fat away every uh, every day so you, you know you could have that lean mean fighting machine <laughs> you know in the spirit you know what i'm saying 
Alright, um, next video I'm gonna hit. Uh, I think this one, uh, the Elder sent me as well. One simple but brilliant trick to cool your home in 90 seconds. Tired of hot and stuffy rooms during. Police are investigating a carjacking in North Philadelphia. The victim fought back. Let's get out to see what the latest on this one. Yeah, he's 59 years old, and we talked to him overnight. He said, quote, I'm happy I had a gun. And here is his used Toyota Avalon. It's about 15 years old. And that shows you that carjackers will steal anything. And they had a gun in his face as he's leaving a female acquaintance's home at A in the Boulevard at 5 of 11. So again, it's prime time. Car not of great value. Uh, now, even less value with a lot of bullet holes in it and also a lot of blood. Uh, because after the kid, just 21, that shoved a gun in this 59-year-old car owner's face who happens to be an off-duty corrections officer but has a permit to carry a concealed weapon. You know, corrections officers don't use guns while they're in jails and prison. He works over on State Road where the Philadelphia prisons are. Uh, so he carries a gun like so many people are these days just for self-protection when they're out and about on their own time. And he says he's happy he did uh, because he came through a life or death situation last night and he chose his life over a carjackers. Police officers within about 20, 25 minutes located the Toyota Avalon about a half a mile away from the 4900 block of Bingham Street. That vehicle was found with five bullet holes in it and also a lot of fresh blood inside the driver's seat and some on the center console. The vehicle was unattended, but it was the 59-year-old victim's vehicle, the vehicle that was carjacked. Within a few minutes, we were notified that a shooting victim showed up at Temple Hospital, a 29-year-old male who was shot one time in each arm. So there's a possibility that that shooting victim may be the individual that committed this robbery carjacking. So here's how it goes down like a lot of car jankings. Uh, teens drive around looking for a victim. And they don't care what car it is or who it is. Uh, they didn't size up this victim too well. Uh, so the passenger gets out and then holds up the guy for this Toyota Avalon. Meanwhile, his accomplice is nearby in the uh, sidecar. And as he takes off, they dump the car only a half mile away. He gets back in his accomplice's car who races the temple, drops off his accomplice who's bleeding badly in both arms, and then speeds away. Uh, so you can understand why, because he's another carjacker as well, even though he wasn't the one pointing the gun in the guy's face. So that's what happens these days. These guys are driving around in prime time, uh, just looking for anybody in any neighborhood driving any car. And frequently they're finding these anybodies are somebodies with concealed carry permits. And these carjackers are getting, let's say, an early sentence, courtesy of the victims, before it ever gets to court. Thomas Scouts. Okay, well, thank you, C, for giving. So, see, so this was uh, one guy that actually fought back, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like, you know, the reporter said, you know, they're stealing anything. And these cars, they are not high-value cars like, um, you know, probably a Maserati or a Lamborghini or anything. They're stealing everyday working people vehicle. You know, um, Toyotas, you know, those old Hondas, you know, they, they like to steal, um, you know these things so people don't care anymore man a lot of, of um of many is waxing cool you know and this is why a lot of people they're not going out like they used to i had one guy told me um you know so you, you know like after work especially like for the holiday season that is um coming around he said he's not coming out at all he got everything he needs he got all the food he needs and everything so he's not coming out of his house you know for anything you know what I mean? Compared to like years ago, you know, you, you know, you, you, you would have people come outside just to, you know, go for a random ride, get some fresh air, you know, relax, so on and so forth. Now, you know, people are considering, you know, their safety. But then again, you know, if the Mosa is not with you, even on that food run, because you got to come out to your house to go to work, you got to come out to your house, you know, um, to make a, a food run, you know, do, do errands, pay bills, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And at that time, if the most I have your number, you know what I mean, you wouldn't make it. You know what I mean? The most I send in lightning strikes to strike people. So that's another one. So you may not be a victim of a crime, but, you know, a lightning strike might come your way.
you know what I mean? So, all these things, you know, is why we, you know, we should consider fear in the most high. You know what I mean? Because, you know, he could use anything, man. He could use a tree to fall on you. <laughs> he could use anything. And anything is uh, considered a weapon um, to the most high. So, we need to, you know, strive every day, pray and ask for forgiveness, you know, and, you know, repent and repent, you know, of offend less. All right. Last um, portion of scripture being a uh, Old Testament Jeremiah. This one is commonly known, 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So, judgment is coming um, upon us first because we had that uh, covenant uh, with the Most High. Then that would be in um, 2 Chronicles 15 and 12. Um... Let's see. Yeah. Second Chronicles 15 and 12, it says, And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. So when we don't do these things, uh, judgment and stuff is going to come upon us. And it even said in verse 13, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel, Yehabawah Yehabashai, should be put to death whether small or great with a man or woman so we're gonna see a lot of judgment fall upon our people uh young and old man so don't be um dismayed you know and wonder why this thing happened to this child or to this woman um it's because of our sin you know and he's visiting us first and he's visiting the house of israel first but the other nations they are gonna receive their hell within that uh, time as well so they are not gonna be exempt from judgment uh, from our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So, Lord willing, um, an additional amount of fear was sent to you um, through this lesson. And this lesson was for me first and foremost. Because right? we all have to uh, consider our ways and works um, circumspectly. Alright, so Lord willing, you know, you were edified. This is your brother, Rai Banyamian. And I say Shalom.